is Caitlin and today I am back with a new series type thing that I have had in the works for so long. This has been planned for like longer than I can remember. I've just wanted to do this type of video for so long and I just decided why not just do it now. There's been like a spike in popularity in these sort of videos and more people are, are doing them so I thought why not just do it. Not to jump on the trend or anything just because it's kind of given me the confidence and I don't know, the relief that I needed to know that it's actually okay to start transitioning content. Like Bella Fiore in things, I've watched them for ages and seeing her, for example, transition from completely like beauty videos to half beauty, half sort of mystery videos, it's just kind of given me a bit of relief because I know that people have taken that way really well. I was worried that you guys weren't going to like what I was making so I'm not going to transition completely but I just thought um, mystery and forensic sciences and psychology are things that have been a huge part of my life for so long. They've always interested me like since I can remember I have been obsessed with sort of crimes and uh, mysteries and things, unsolved murders, missing children, things like that and I just thought this YouTube channel is what I love to do and I do love to do fashion and makeup and things like that as well so I'm not going to completely transition content, I'm going to split it. If you like it then great, if not then maybe just stick to watching the content that you enjoy. I'm just going to do these um, once every other video or once every few videos just depending on how well it goes down, let me know sort of if this is the sort of thing you want to see. Obviously like I said, n not really going to change that much, it's just going to be an extra sort of style of video. So yeah, let me know down below if you do enjoy these videos, if you want me to keep going, if you like this one and also if you do want me to keep going, maybe some specific cases or theories or something you want me to discuss, then leave those all down below. So for today's video we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Amber Hageman or Hageman or however it's pronounced, different accents, I can't pronounce the names. The story of Amber Hageman's disappearance has sort of had a few knock-on effects that are still in place today which I will go into detail but if you've ever heard of the Amber Alert system this is actually the case that inspired that encouraged the sorry lipstick this is actually the case that inspired the uh, and encouraged the Amber Alert system to be put in place and it is still used to this day so um, it's kind of really interesting to learn sort of the background of that and how that came about so I will discuss that in detail but to start with I'll just talk about what happened to Amber and the mysteriousness that surrounded her disappearance. So on January the 13th 1996 in Arlington, Texas, Amber, who was nine years old at the time, and her five-year-old brother Ricky decided to ride their bikes. They went on a bike ride together, which I mean me and my brother used to do all the time. And when they left their mother told them sort of the area that she wanted them to stay between because obviously they were still young, but they decided that they wanted to go to an abandoned grocery store, which is just a little bit further than um, where their mother said that she wanted them to go. Uh, this particular grocery store it was completely abandoned and from the sounds of it it was kind of just like a popular place. A lot of kids went there to ride their bikes, it was just like an empty car park and things. So obviously they didn't go inside and the grocery store was in Arlington and it was on East Abram Street I believe. Just a little bit after they arrived there, Ricky the five year old brother got a little bit nervous and he decided to go back home because he was sort of just getting a bit worried that they'd gone further than where their mother had said obviously as most five year olds probably would be. And when he asked Amber um, if she wanted to go with him, she just didn't come, she wanted to stay and ride a bike for a bit. So Ricky went home and left Amber at the abandoned grocery store. But when Ricky got home, obviously the parents and the grandparents said, oh, where's Amber? And he basically just explained what happened, that she wanted to stay, she didn't want to come home yet. And the first thing they said was, go back and get her, because she shouldn't be alone. So Ricky was sent straight back to go find Amber. When he arrived there, she was gone, she, he couldn't find her. He had no idea where she was and so he rode back again I believe, this is just obviously from different sources, um, he rode back and told them that he couldn't find them. And obviously when he got back they saw their frantic five year old son saying that he couldn't find his sister and I believe it was the grandfather, I think Jimmy Whitson, who went out straight away to go look for her. He drove around sort of around the area and the way she would have ridden home to get there and to come back just to find her and he could not find anything. When he actually arrived at the grocery store itself police were already there, which obviously is not a good sign for him. So police were actually already searching the area because of a call that was made from a Jim Kevill, who was a 78 year old man and he was in his garden I believe, or just somewhere on his property, which is nearby and he saw from his property what had happened to Amber. I have a statement here that he said to the police, so I'll read that out now. So this is Kevill's description of what happened. He said, I saw Amber riding up and down, she was by herself, I saw this pickup. 
He pulled up, jumped out and grabbed her. When she screamed, I figured the police ought to know about it, so I called them. So pretty much he just saw this van come out and grab a small girl that was by herself and obviously his instinct was to call the police, which was a good sign because obviously he didn't know at the time, but um, she was taken. The description of the man and the truck, he said the truck was a dark colour, possibly black, but he wasn't entirely sure. And then the man himself that got out of the truck was white with the possibility of being Hispanic. Now obviously this isn't the most detailed description, but it was the best they could get out of him because it was a little bit away, it wasn't super close. And obviously if you're not looking for something in particular, um, you're not going to notice details. So obviously he was just sort of looking about and it was only when he realised that she was being grabbed that he paid attention. Because obviously a nine-year-old girl had been taken or abducted, the police and the FBI conducted like this huge large-scale search for her in the surrounding areas. It was such a big thing at the time, there was a huge deal about it because obviously young girl, it's a tragedy. It did not go under the radar, it was a big deal. There were actually reports of a similar truck to the one described in Kevil's description found um, just parked outside a laundromat nearby just before Amber went missing but the, obviously because this was a an account received after the crime they didn't really have much to go on they couldn't actually find the truck that was particularly outside the laundromat so they did follow that but they did try to chase up that lead but they didn't find the specific truck. It wasn't until around four days after the search began that they actually found Amber's body. So a man who I believe just lived in the area who was walking his dog only a few miles away from the grocery store and his dog alerted him to sort of something in a creek nearby where they were walking and it was only when he went to see what it was that the dog was barking at that he realised it was the body of a young girl. Obviously he didn't know it was specifically Amber at the time but when he did report it to the police it was found out pretty much instantly just from the appearance that it was Amber because it was only a few days after she'd gone missing so there wasn't too much deterioration or anything. So when they did the autopsy on her body as they typically do they found out that she'd been alive about two days after she had been taken and it also showed that unfortunately in those two days she had been assaulted in numerous ways which is awful. It's absolutely just cases like this actually hurt me so much to think of just such a young girl suffering so much but yeah unfortunately that did happen. Because of obviously the circumstances that this girl had suffered the police and the FBI worked together to set up a task force to find Amber's killer and abduct her. So this huge investigation went into finding out who took her who, and who killed her and there was tens of thousands of leads that they all followed th uh, throughout the years. They followed so many leads that nothing ended up being anything particularly solid that they could follow. And then by 1999 the case ha itself had gone completely cold because they chased all the leads they were given, everything that they investigated came up, just completely nothing and so unfortunately the case was cold about four years later. So just a little bit after Amber had gone missing and it became such a widely known thing, there was actually a caller that phoned into a Dallas radio station I believe and they pretty much just asked flat out why can't law enforcement teams and the media just work together to create some form of communication with the public when a child goes missing. Hence the start of the Amber Alert system which if you don't live in the US you may not necessarily know what it is. I know I didn't at first um, until I sort of looked into it a little bit because we don't have it here in the UK. So to this day they still use it and the Amber Alert system pretty much is like when a child goes missing I believe if it's under 17 years old a nationwide alert gets sent out to everyone's phones and devices and things and I think there's like a little alarm that comes with it. It just says what they're looking for, um, there's a child that's gone missing because obviously when children go missing there's a short time period where it's the most crucial to get any information they can so they send out this nationwide alert to tell everyone to help them if they can. So in many ways the absolutely awful thing that happened to Amber has helped a lot a lot of kids um, to this day so that's something good that has come out of her memory and her legacy. Now in terms of the investigation of Amber Hagerman's death, there were virtually no solid theories that came out of her disappearance or anything. They couldn't find, like I said, any, any strong leads from all of the suspects that they approached. Pretty much all they had to go on was the eyewitness description from Kevil, what he said about the, um, the abductor and the truck. And they also found a few fibres on her when they did an autopsy, but it's kind of a few little fibres versus thousands and thousands of people so they have not really had much to go on. So when they got a police profiler to come in to look at the case he said that 
the abductor was most likely at least 25 years old, which is obviously still quite a, a general statement to make. And it's highly likely that he lived or worked nearby to um, the grocery store. More likely so that he lived nearby because he would have needed somewhere to keep her for the two days after he took her. And um, because he didn't, because the body was found so close, it was just a few miles away from where she went missing, it suggests that it was all sort of within the same area. Obviously there's been a lot of discussion about the circumstances of her disappearance. Um, it's pretty much sort of just been decided that she was taken on a whim, like it was um, an opportunistic abduction. So she was just grabbed because he'd seen her, and not because he'd been following her, and random abductions of children are very, very um, rare in the grand scheme of things. It's so much more likely that children, to this day, it's just so much more likely that kids are taken because of someone they know, um, because the thing is with children, they're very, very well taught nowadays especially to not talk to strangers and things so it is much more likely that they'll feel safer with someone they know so they're more likely to go away with them and unfortunately that is just how it happens but in this case it is believed that she didn't know him and it was just a random abduction which is quite a scary thought that it happens but it does happen despite being rare they had profiles and things in and they said the most likely cause was that there was a trigger event so the abductor he had some sort of trigger event in his life that made him snap so people say this could be from anything like people have theorized that he maybe had an argument with a partner and he just wanted to lash out because obviously there would have been a reason for him to just grab this young girl that he randomly passed on the street so again it's not a nice thought but that's kind of what many people theorize about the circumstances surrounding her abduction. So that is all of the evidence that I could find. Uh, let me know if there's anything I've missed. Obviously there's going to be inconsistencies because there's a bunch of different sources. I've tried to do the most accurate research I can. We used a whole bunch of different research sources and things but let me know if there's any um, any more details you know about this case. Maybe some of your guys' theories. I think there could potentially somewhere be more specific theories but yeah let me know um sort of your thoughts and what you think kind of went on and also i just love to see a discussion being opened up in the comments because i love sort of discussing these sort of things it's really interesting so um it'd be great to see you guys sort of showing an interest as well also let me know if you enjoy sort of watching these types of videos and find them just as fascinating as i do and if there are any specific cases you want me to talk about in the future because i think i'm going to continue this series maybe once a week i don't know yet we shall see but yes i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys soon for another one bye